Hello friends, in the previous videos, we covered types and how to use some complex ones. We learned that strings, numbers, and bools are primitive types, while lists, tuples, and sets are complex types. In this video, we'll cover two more complex types, map and object. Map and object combine multiple values into a single one inside a pair of curly braces. They are formed by key value pairs separated by commas or line breaks. List, set, and map are collection types, whereas tuple and objects are structural types. Object type is for map what tuple is for list. Map contains elements of the same type, while object is a collection of named attributes, each having their own type. Keys must be strings, and they can be encoded if valid identifiers, in other words, if the key is a combination of letters, digits, underscores, hyphens, and does not start with a number, otherwise codes are necessary. The key word map is a shorthand for map any, meaning it can contain any type as long as all elements are of the same type. Let's put this into practice and create a simple map. The keyword map is a shorthand for map any, meaning it can contain any type as long as all elements are of the same type. Let's put this into practice and create a simple map. All the attributes should be of the same type, in our case type equals string. For map, attributes are defined and declared inside the default block with their default values. The difference between map and list is at usage. List attributes are accessed through indices. For map, you use attributes names instead of indices. We'll demonstrate this later. But if you need a single variable to hold attributes of different types, even maps and objects, then you should turn to object type instead. As said before, object is similar to tuple, you can have different types for attributes. Moreover, it allows to add more complexity to your variables. A simple object would have the following structure. Attribute names and types are declared in the object block and default values are declared inside the default block. An object can also have nested blocks. We can add another object within the type definition and add in some attributes and declare its values in the default block in the same way. In addition to type constraints, you can specify custom validation rules for a particular value using validation blocks. A validation block is nested within the variable and defines two arguments, condition and error message. Condition is an expression returning true or false depending on the value of the variable. The condition expression can only refer to the variable within which it is defined and must not produce an error. It can only return true or false. Error message is a string explaining which constraints failed in case the condition isn't met. The validation error message must be at least one full sentence starting with an uppercase letter and ending with a period or question mark. Otherwise, you'll get an error. If condition returns false, their form produces an error error message that includes the sentence given in the error message attribute. As per usual, let's apply what we just learned. First, switch VM params variable from tuple to object, then add in attributes definition. We need a name, a machine type, zone, and allow stopping for update. Then update the default block to reflect the type and declare these values. And also for the fun of it, add in a validation block. The condition should check that the VM name is at least four characters with the length function. We will probably cover Terraform functions in another video and give it a clear error message and that's it. In the main file, update VM fields to use attribute names instead of indices. Start with the name, replace the string with var.vmparams.name and instead of having brackets for the remaining ones, replace them with the correct attribute names. Machine type for zero, zone for one and allow stopping for update for two. Run Terraform plan, it should work just the same. Okay, so far we learned about input variables, types, constraints, and validation rules. You now have enough knowledge to write your own configurations with confidence. But you'll notice that with time you'll have increasingly complex configurations and understanding and navigating and updating them will become more challenging. Also, you'll definitely have an increasing amount of duplicated configuration blocks. In the next videos, we'll see how to address these issues with the Terraform modules. Till then, thank you for watching and see you soon.